Okay, so please make sure class na naka-off yung mga microphone niyo. Okay, so okay lang yung naka-on yung uh, camera niyo but still uh, much better na naka-off yung uh, camera para hindi masyadong uh, ano yun, kainin yung data na meron kayo. Ngayon. Okay. So again, so ready na ba? Okay, so paki-ano nga sa ating uh, comment section kung uh, ready na yung lahat. Okay, ready na. Sige. Pwede kayo mag-open ng camera class ha, para hindi ma hindi naman ako masyadong nag-iisa tingnan. <laughs> so ayan. So of course, kapag sinabi ko may mga certain questions diyan and interactions, of course dapat gamitin niyo yung ating chat box para meron tayong interaction kahit online lang tayo. O kahit online tayo, face to face or online same pa rin yan kapag naka-focus talaga kayo class. Okay? So let's start with our discussion this afternoon. Okay, so ang uh, discussion natin uh, this afternoon of course sa uh, institutional correction. Okay, institutional correction class. Mauna tayo sa or ad. Okay? So kasi minsan ah uh, tangi to. Okay, balik na. Lang. Okay, so dito na lang natin. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. So we have the uh, institutional correction na meron tayo. Okay, so yan, ito yung discussion natin this afternoon or this uh, evening class. Okay, so meron tayong related laws na dapat ninyong malaman or dapat ninyong uh, malaman dito sa subject na institutional correction. So of course, number one yung class. So dapat we have the View for Act of 2013 ang dapat ninyong malaman dyan or dapat ninyong i-download. is the Republic Act 10575. So, dyan kinuha mostly yung aking discussion this afternoon. Okay? So, again, pag sinabi natin uh, RA 10575, that is the View for Act of 2013. So, that is the Republic Act 10575. And of course, second, we have the BGMP Manual or the uh, Bureau of Jail Management and Technology Manual that is in RA 6975. Of course, alam niyo naman ang RA 10.6975 that was the uh, law creating the uh, tri-bureau. Okay? Creating the tri-bureau in the Philippines. Of course, that is composed of uh, PNP, PFP, and BJMP. Then, of course, uh, number three na, na related laws na dapat ninyong malaman class. Of course, we have the Public Act 9263 that is the BJMP. And of course, uh, BFP Professionalization Act of 2014. Kasi of course, ang PNP, naka-separate naman yan. Yung uh, tinatawag natin na RA8551. Okay, RA8551. So yan yung tinatawag natin na PNP Professionalization Law naman yon. So of course, dapat ninyong malaman na this uh, separate yung uh, BJMP and of course the BFP. So yan ka sa so View for Act of 2013, the BJMP Manual and RA9263. So yan yung content ng ating discussion this uh, evening. Then of course, uh, aside from the national laws or related laws na meron tayo dito sa Pilipinas, of course, meron, meron rin tayo rin tinatawag na international guidelines. Okay, so lumalabas rin to sa board exam. So of course, uh, isa dyan, we have the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. So of course, yan yung ICCPR. So uh, yan yung mga uh, rights, of course, yung mga prisoners natin ng, uh, as an individual based on international guidelines. Then of course, tanda ninyo, Proclamation Number 551, Series of 1995, declaring the last week of October as the National Correctional Consciousness Week. Okay, so that is the NACOCO. So isulat ko dito, class, ah. So para ma-take note ninyo. Okay. So, hindi ako sanay, parang hindi ako ma wala akong makita. Okay, so ayan. So tanda niyo, so uh, Proclamation Number 551, Series of 1995, that is the NACOCO. Okay, the NACOCO Week. Ibig sabihin, that is the yung NA that stands for National Yung CO that stands for correctional and yung uh, uh, C, uh, CO pa rin, that is consciousness and of course yung W that is weak. So that's why a proclamation number 551 series of 1995 declaring the last week of October as the National Correctional Consciousness Week. Okay, so I hope it's clear. 
And of course, we have the United Nations standard or minimum ro- rules for the treatment of prisoners. So, yan na yung isa na dapat ninyong ma-master. So, we have the UN standards on the minimum rules for treatment of prisoners. Kapag halimbawa, uh, hindi naging effective or hindi um, walang rules yung isang country when it comes to treatment sa prisoners, so of course, yan yung ipafollow natin, yung international guidelines. Kapag hindi nasusunod or kung kapag walang batas class, yung uh, bansa or yung state or yung government, of course, yung uh, magpa-function as our basis is of course yung international guidelines and rules. Just like we have international covenant on civil and political rights and of course, we have the UN standards, minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners. Yung proclamation number 551 series of 1995 plus of course sa Pilipinas yan ha? Okay, na nahalo yun lang dyan. Okay, so yan. So, I hope it's clear. So, let's proceed now sa next slide. Okay. Next slide tayo. So, okay. So, dito tayo, class. Okay. So, actually, dito pa lang, okay? So, dito pa lang na picture na nakikita ninyo. So, malalaman nyo na actually ang buong uh, correction system ng Pilipinas. Okay? So, ayan. So, makinig ko dito yan. So, explain natin. Okay? Please make sure na naka-off yung microphone niyo. Okay. So we have the Philippine uh, Philippine Correctional System. Again, ang Philippine Correctional System natin class. Okay, so mag, uh, magkakaroon tayo ng annotation dito. So para mas marami kayong makuha. Okay. So tandaan niyo ang Philippine Correctional System class that is under the office of the president. Okay? Under the executive branch of the government. Okay, tandaan niyo. Ang uh, uh, Okay, ang uh, Philippine Correctional System Plus that is under the executive branch of the government, so meaning under the uh, direct supervision and control of the office of the president. Ulitin natin. Ang uh, Philippine Correctional System natin class that is under the executive branch of the government. Kung sa law enforcement agencies, meron tayong tinatawag na tribuno, yung uh, Philippine National Police, yung BJMP, and BFP. Dito naman sa correction, meron tayong tinatawag na Philippine Correctional System Tribuno. So that is composed of course yung una, we have the Department of Interior and Local Government or the DILG. Kasunod naman of course si Department of Justice and of course we have the Department of Social Welfare and Development. Okay. So again, ulitin ko ang Philippine Correctional System natin that is composed of Tribuno. That is the Department of Interior and Local Government the Department of Justice, and the Department of Social Welfare and Development. So, tanda niyo under the DILG class, siya yung may supervision or may uh, supervision and control over the city, municipal, and provincial jails. Okay, again, ulitin natin. Ang uh, Department of Interior and Local Government, siya yung uh, tinalaga ng korte or tinalaga ng batas natin to uh, take charge with the prisoners doon sa city, municipal, provincial jails. And of course, class, tandaan niyo uh, yung tanatawag natin na provincial jails. Of course, naka-separate yan kasi, naka-separate yan. Ang, uh, oh, si dito natin ilagay sa baba. Okay, ang uh, provincial jails, okay, ang provincial jails, class, ang in-charge dyan ngayon is under what we call the local government unit or what we call the LGE natin, or yung mga local government executives. So, dito natin ha, ang uh, Europe Jail Management and Technology, or the BGMP, tanda ninyo, ang uh, in-charge lang, or yung may karapatan siya, or they're in charge with the supervision and control over city, municipal, and district. Okay, uh, erase natin itong provincial, kasi siguro yung ano nila. Okay, so para mas clear tayo. Okay, sulat nyo dyan ha. So, ayan. So tanda niyo ang BGMP, okay? So of course aside sa city, municipal, of course district jails. Siya yung may uh, supervision and control. Ibig sabihin siya yung may jurisdiction over the um, prisoners na naka-confine sa tinatawag natin na um, BGMP. Then of course tanda niyo kapag under ka sa BGMP class, okay? Kapag doon ka ikinulong, ibig sabihin yung punishment na crime na nagawa mo is uh, below 3 years. Okay? Below 3 years yung punishment 
ng crime na nagawa mo. Okay? You committed a crime below three years. Kasi nga, under sa Department of Justice or under the Bureau of Correction, meaning ang uh, crime or ang uh, punishment okay, na na-commit na mo is uh, more than three years. Okay? So more than three years yung punishment na na-commit mo in the Bureau of Corrections. Ulitin natin. Ang Department of Interior and Local Government that is of course uh, dyan na belong or dyan under si uh, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology were in a BGMP class in, is in charge with the uh, supervision and control uh, of the prisoners under the city, municipal, and district jails. Of course, uh, under sa BGMP, nandyan yung provincial jails natin wherein nakaseparate naman yan. Ang nangangalaga dyan or ang in charge dyan is of course yung tinatawag natin na local government executives, of course si mayor or si governor, and of course yung tinatawag natin na LGU. Okay? So yan yung tinatawag natin na BGMP. Then of course dito sa Department of Justice or the DOJ, then dyan na belong or dyan na belong si tinatawag natin na Bureau of Correction or BU4. Then siya naman yung in charge sa supervision of control yung mga national prisoners na tawag natin. Ayan sa baba, national prisoners. So, ang mga national prisoners class, take note, that is, they are punished or yung punishment na binibigay sa kanila is more than three years. So, basically, ang tawag sa kanila is national prisoners. Then, of course, we have the Department of Social Welfare and Development or the DSWD. Of course, nandiyan na belong si tinatawag natin na Bureau of Child and Youth Welfare. Of course, yung tinatawag natin na children in conflict with the law, ang tawag natin sa kanilang class is what we call the youth offender. Okay, so youth offender rin ang tawag natin dyan. Ulitin natin, uh, as a summary class, actually class sa mga sinabi ko, mga 20 or 15 na ang lalabas doon. Okay, so ulitin natin na. So actually, uh, namangha sila nung... Uh, uh, yan yung ano natin. Uh, yung, sa, yung sa picture pa lang, kayang-kaya ko na i-explain yan at ang daming lumalabas talaga during board exam. Yun yung uh, maraming uh, feedback na yung picture daw na na-explain ko, ang daming lumabas. So again, ulitin natin, ang Philippine Correctional System natin that is under the uh, executive branch of the government. So meaning, they are, it is under the direct supervision and control of the office of the president. Then uh, we have the Philippine Tribe Bureau or in when it comes to correctional system natin. That is composed of the DILG, the DOJ, and of course the DSWD. Ang DILG, of course, nandyan under si uh, BGMP, wherein they're in charge with the uh, supervision and control of city, municipal, and district uh, prisoners. And of course, nandyan rin si provincial jails, wherein nakaseparate yan ang uh, in charge dyan, of course, yung tinatawag natin na local government unit or the local government executives. But merong nilabas ngayon na memo ang words. Uh, titingnan natin kung uh, mamaterialize nun na yung tinatawag natin na provincial jails ibabalik na ngayon sa BGMP. Okay? So, hindi pa naman yan finalized. So, wag po na natin pag-usapan yun. Then, of course, ang Department of Justice nandyan na belong si tinatawag natin na uh, BUCOR or the Bureau of Correction where they are in charge or on the uh, supervision and control of the national prisoners wherein yung punishment inflicted or yung uh, punishment ng crime na nagawa nila. <laughs> uh, Pakaw po ng microphone yung iba. Baka may masabi kayo dyan mamaya. Then of course, the Department of Social Welfare and uh, pakaw po ng microphone class. Uh, wait na. I-mute po na lang. Okay. So, of course, we have the Department of Social Welfare and Development or the DSWD. Of course, they are in charge with yung mga youth offender natin. Basically, yung mga child in conflict with the law or the CICL. Nakuha ba? Okay. So, nakuha ba class? So, naintindihan ninyo? Maki-confirm nga sa baba? Okay. Okay, pa-confirm na class kung okay na. Okay, good. Okay, next tayo, next slide. Okay, so dito tayo sa mga important terms. Okay, important terms. Of course, kailangan ko na dito ng participation ninyo. 
Okay, so we have the important terms in institutional correction. Okay, sige. Okay, thank you. So next, dito tayo ngayon sa important terminologies. Okay, so pl please identify kapag sinabi ko ganito, yun lang muna yung um, sagutan ninyo, then after that, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So, okay. Please identify kung sino yung gumagamit ng term na prison, sinong gumagamit ng term na jail, sinong gumagamit ng term na lockup jail, detention center, custodial camp, and bahay pag-asa. Okay. Sige. So, sa number one muna tayo, class. Okay. Number one. Sige. Sino or anong agency or anong establishment ang gumagamit ng term na prison? Okay. On the comment section. Titingnan ko yung mga sagot ninyo. Okay. Okay, so ayan, view four. Okay, so ayan, view four. Mm -hmm. Sige, thank you. Okay, so lahat ay, lahat mag-participate ha, ilan kayo dito ngayon? Uh, 37, so dapat lahat mag-participate. Okay, binabasa ko yung mga sagot ninyo, so ayan. Hahabo lang daw yung iba nating kasama. Okay, so Bureau of Correction. So titingnan natin mamaya kung tama yung Bureau of Correction. Okay, how about naman class? Okay, number two na tayo. How about naman ang jail? Sino naman ang gumagamit ng jail? Okay, BJMP. Ma Okay, so hindi ko pa uh, hindi ko pa sinasabi ah, kung tama yan or mali. Okay. Okay. Okay, how about naman? Okay, so sino naman ang gumagamit? Okay. Sino naman ang gumagamit class? Okay, tap tapos na ba lahat? Nakasagot na yung 37 uh, participants natin. Sino naman yung gumagamit ng tinatawag natin na lockup jail? Okay, sino asa naman yan? Applicable ang lockup jail. Hmm. Ayun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ayan. Uh, tignan natin. Okay, tingnan nyo mamaya kung perfect yung scores ninyo. Then how about, sino naman yung gumagamit class ng tinatawag natin na detention center? Sino naman ang gumagamit ng tinatawag natin na detention center? Okay, ba bakit naghang kayo? <laughs> sino yung gumagamit ng uh, detention center ha? Do not open the go Google or books. Again, sino yung gumagamit ng detention center? Okay, may sumagot ng PNP, may sumagot ng YRC. Hmm. May sumagot ng NBI, PDEA, and etc. Mm -hmm. So, ayan. May nakita akong tamang sagot. So, hindi ko, mamaya ko na lang i- ano, Mamaya na natin i-confirm sa explanation. Na. May PIDEA, may PNP. Okay, sino ba talaga yung tamang sagot sa inyo? May NBI. Okay, how about sino naman ang gumagamit ng term ng custodial cap? Okay, sino naman ang gumagamit na term or ng term na custodial camp? Okay, sino naman yung gumagamit? Ha? Lahat mag-participate class. Okay, uh, uh, don't aim for the uh, correct answer. Okay, hindi importante class. Ang importante, yung lesson mamaya na makuha ninyo after this uh, discussion natin. PNP. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how about yung tinatawag natin na bahay pag-asa? Okay, 
Sana naman yung kanatawag natin na bahay pag-asa. Okay, bahay pag-asa. Okay, so lahat ka sa mag party. Ah, ilan na tayo dito? Ah, 35. So, ayan, good. So, DSWD. Mm -hmm. ah, let's see kung tama kayo. Okay, so ipa-flash na natin class. So, ilagay niyo yung scores niyo ah, sa ating ano, si uh, sa ating uh, comment section kung ilan yung nakuha niyo. 2 4 2 4 6. Okay, oh, uh, hanggang number 6. So, tingnan na natin kung tama kayo. Okay, so dito tayo. Explain natin one by one class. Okay, so exp let's explain one by one. So pag sinabi natin prison class, of course, basically ang tawag natin dyan, ang gumagamit ng term na yan is the Bureau of Correction. Okay, ang Bureau of Correction. Ilagay nyo kung ilang scores ninyo class. Then of course, ang jail naman, ginagamit niya ng BGMP or the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. Take note, ang prisons, ang kinatawag natin, of course, sa view for yan, Meaning, yung punishment or penalty ng um, nakakulong dyan is 3 years up. While sa jail naman, ang penalty na nakakulong dyan is 3 years below. Sa lockup jail, of course, ang gumagamit dyan is the Philippine National Police. Every police stations na meron tayo sa Pilipinas, meron yung lockup jail. Ang purpose dyan is for temporary uh, detention. Okay? Yung mga nakuli. So, yan yung tinatawag natin ng lockup jails. That is the PNP. Actually, ang lockup jail, of course, pwede rin yan for safekeeping. Okay, pwede ka magpa-safekeeping doon class. Ano ba? Uh, yung person na yan is uh, dangerous to the community or is, sa sarili mo mismo na feel mo na dangerous ka or walang control, pwede ka magpa-lockup jail. Okay? So yan yung sa PNP. Then of course, ang detention center naman, in every law enforcement agency or in every agency's class, meron yung tinatawag na detention center. Halimbawa, ang NBI or the National Bureau of Investigation, the Bureau of In uh, Investigation, the NICA or the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency. We have the uh, Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA and etc. So every law enforcement agencies in the Philippines, meron yung mga detention center wherein ang for temporary detention. Halimbawa, sa PDEA, Kapag may nahuli sila na gabi na, of course, hindi naman uh, or 2 a.m. or uh, 12, uh, ano, midnight. So, hindi naman agad-agad nila pwedeng ilagay or ibigay sa police station. Of course, yan yung purpose, detention center. Okay? Ang purpose ng class is for temporary detention na naman. Okay? So, i-turn over pa rin nila yan. Then, of course, we have the custodial camp. Okay? Very good. Uh, that is what we call, uh, ang ginagamit yan ng Armed Forces of the Philippines or the AFP. Then of course, yung mga bahay pag-asa, of course, ang gumagamit yan, walang iba, yung DSWD. Okay, sila yung nangangalaga sa mga child in conflict with the law or yung mga pinatawag natin na youth offenders in the Philippines. Okay, so I hope uh, alam nyo or very specific kayo sa tinatawag natin na uh, different distinction or different uh, terminologies na to. Okay, so yan. Nakuha ba? Uh, Paki-confirm class kung okay na ba? Okay, may uh, ilan ang scores niyo? May 3, may 4, may 6. Okay, so okay, very good. Okay pa rin yan. Ang importante, okay, importante class, so alam nyo na ngayon. So very specific. Dapat, you must be specific. Okay, so ganun. Okay, next tayo. Next slide. Okay, so of course, meron na tayong question and answer. Okay, so the triad, pangit kasi class kapag sa lecture, na walang, uh, wala, uh, kahit online. Kaya gustong-gusto na lang ako sa online mag-lecture kasi may interaction pa rin. Pangit kasi yung ikaw lang nagsasalita. Okay, dapat meron na yung sumasagot. Sumasagot rin yung mga student para hindi sila mabore. Okay, so I will read the question twice and of course the suggested answer. So the triad of institutional correction that deals with reformation and rehabilitation education of prisoners. Again, the triad of institutional correction that deals with reformation and rehabilitation education of prisoners. Letter A, correction. Letter B, penal management. Letter C, penology. And letter D, prison. 
Okay, so lahat ha, yung 37 participants natin, please answer on the comment section. Okay, may letter A, may letter B. Okay, sino kaya yung tamang sagot? Okay, so ayan. So titignan natin kung sino yung may tamang sagot dito. Okay, so the triad of institutional correction that deals with reformation and rehabilitation education of prisoners. Okay, so of course, ang sagot natin dyan, class, that is correction. Okay? So ang sagot natin dyan is correction. Okay, so then let's explain bakit correction ang sagot natin dito. Okay, so dito tayo. Okay, class. So dito yung triad of institutional correction natin, class. Ito yung triad ng institutional correction natin. So, okay. So bakit tayo mga ano po? Okay. So we have, of course, yung una, we have the correction. Okay, so we have the correction, the uh, panel management, and technology. So pag sinabi natin correction, of course, yan yung in charge sa reformation, rehabilitation, and education. So ang dapat yung tanda niya, class, ang keyword dyan is RRE. Okay, so yan yung focus ng correction class. Then uh, meron tayong tinatawag na high school vocational dito sa education under the correction of kaya di ba may nag-graduate uh, ng high school sa Bilibid Prison. So that's why under yan sa education. So take note class, ang correction, so they are in charge o naka-focus yan sa reformation, rehabilitation, and education of the offenders or yung mga prisoners natin. So that is composed of high school, okay, vocational, sa education and of course meron sila mga recreational activities. So tandaan niyo, ang correction class, ang acronym lang na dapat niyo sundin diyan is RRE, Reformation, Rehabilitation and Education. While the panel management, of course, uh, it deals or it talks about the control or yung controlling ng tinatawag natin na uh, the system sa loob ng kulungan. So example diyan yung escorting. Pag sinabi nating escorting, of course, that is uh, the process of transferring yung mga prisoners from one penal institution to another penal institution. So that is penal management. Then of course, ang penology naman class, tandaan nyo naman ang penology, of course, that is uh, a punishment. Okay? So of course, it talks about sa pagbibigay ng punishment. Kaya tanawag din natin yan ng penal science. So mamaya, explain natin further. Ulitin natin, of course, ang correction that is in, in charge with reformation, rehabilitation, and education. So wag niyong i-discuss class or wag niyong i-define ang correction according sa meaning nito sa tinatawag natin na, ay sorry, sa tinatawag natin na criminal justice system. Kasi marami akong nakikita na ang pag-define nila sa tinatawag natin na correction is nakabase sa CGS or the criminal justice system. Okay, that is, that's wrong. Okay, so marami nang kita doon na sana abi nila ang correction it is a uh, component of the criminal justice system blah 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 hindi ganoon. So magkaiba yung definition ng correction sa subject mismo niya na correction sa correctional or criminal justice system. Ulitin natin, we have the triad of institutional correction, we have the correction, penal management and penology. So ayan, so that's why ang sagot natin kanina doon is correction. Okay, next. Okay, so we have, uh, of course, uh, the term penology. So pag sinabi natin uh, penology, of course, uh, it is also known as the penal science. So basically, ang penology class, it talks about or uh, it talks about the study of punishment. Kaya nga, di ba, tinawag na penal science. Then, of course, ang golden age of penology class, 
Pag sinabi natin golden age of penology, ibig sabihin, meron na mga progress class, meron na mga significant changes when it comes sa ating uh, penology or ating uh, correctional system. Kasi di ba before, very harsh yung punishment na binibigay or very uh, un- inhumane yung mga treatment ng ating mga prisoners we work. Kaya di ba meron tayong mga uh, dungeons and so on. So of course, during 18th century, yan yung time na we're in that is a century of change. May mga changes, may mga pagbabago na when it comes sa treatment ng mga prisoners natin. That is the, also the period of recognizing human de- dignity. Ibig sabihin, binibigyan na ng respect yung, um, yung rights or yung buhay ng isang individual. And of course, that is also <coughs> considered as the age of enlightenment or also known as the reformation era. Meaning, meron na mga pagbabago during that 18th century. Then of course, pag sinabi natin uh, correction, okay, correction of course, so uh, ayan, CSR or criminal offenders, na-explain na natin kanina. Then pag sinabi natin correctional administration, so ayan, uh, CPR, mamaya explain pa natin further sa next slide. Then pag sinabi natin punishment versus penalty, okay, so tandaan niyo, pag sinabi natin punishment, so halimbawa, ang binigay is the death penalty. So yan yung tinatawag natin, <coughs> sorry, yan yung tinatawag natin na penalty. Okay? So ang death penalty. So ano ngayon ang magiging punishment niya? Ang magiging punishment niya, of course, pwedeng uh, death penalty through electrocution or death penalty through lethal injection and so on. So yan yung kaibahan ng punishment versus penalty. Okay? So yan. Next tayo. Okay, so dito tayo ngayon class sa tinatawag natin na death as a capital punishment. So ang death as a capital punishment, of course, meron tayong death by hanging, death by dissection, uh, asphyxiation or strangulation, boiling to death, burning, crucifixion, beheading, drowning, electrocution, lethal injection, shooting, starvation, and dehydration, death fights. Okay, dito tayo class, ulitin natin. So sa kap- capital punishment class, ano among narabanggit dito sa mga kinds of capital punishment which is death, ano dito yung tinatawag natin na na-approve or na nabigay sa mga okay, mga prisoners sa Pilipinas? Okay, paki-mention kung ano-ano dito. Okay, sa mga nakabanggit dito, ano yung mga mga kinds or mga different kinds ng death penalty wherein na-approve or nangyari na sa Pilipinas. Okay, so ayan. So, tinan natin yung mga ano ninyo. Lethal shooting. Okay, so very good. So, among the kinds of the death penalty class na meron tayo, okay? So, of course, ang napatupad lang or ang nangyari lang sa Pilipinas, of course, we have the death by electrocution. Okay, so through electric chair na tinatawag natin wherein yung voltage ng uh, electricity class is more than yung hindi na makaya ng tinatawag natin na katawan ng isang tao. Then of course, we have the death through uh, lethal injection naman. Of course, so ayan. Sige, ano yung tinatawag natin class na, na uh, substance or chemical na ginagamit dito sa lethal injection? Okay, pakinga, pakilagay nga sa ating comment section. Okay, anong substance or chemical yung ginagamit natin dito? Actually, tatanong rin to pagdating sa forensic science. Ano yung chemical or substance na ginagamit sa lethal injection? Ah, po, sige, sige. Ako 
oksigen tetapi hmm. dekat pesandaran susut dekat oksigen hmm. yang di dekat pesandaran susut ah uh, pakai off pun ada mikrofon kencing siap sana okay so ayan okay bakit may potassium chloride okay so ang ating uh, sa chemical or substance class na ginamit sa uh, death penalty through lethal injection very good si Sir JB Munoz that is okay hindi potassium bromide ah. that is uh, teopintal or sodium teopintal okay so teopintal or pintotal yan yung ginamit na ng class na chemical for lethal injection so pag check niyo na lang sa comment section yung comment ni Sir JB so that is the correct answer What is the chemical na ginamit natin sa tinatawag natin na capital uh, punishment as death penalty, yung lethal injection. That is what they call the uh, uh, what it, uh, sodium teopintal or pentotal. Okay, so yun class, ang chemical or substance na ginamit natin. Then of course, we have the uh, shooting. Okay, shooting naman. Sino naman, okay, sino yung personality class? Baka hindi nyo kilala. Sino naman yung personality na we're in? Uh, dito tayo sa death penalty through shooting. Okay? Uh, Pabagad doon siya subject for death penalty through shooting. Okay, so lahat class mag-participate. Okay, so ayan. Okay, very good. So that is of course Dr. Jose Rizal, of course our national hero. Siya yung na subject for what they call the shooting or yung tinatawag natin na death to shooting. Okay, so ayan. Okay, next tayo. Okay, so dito tayo na class and next uh, slide tayo. Okay, so we have the different uh, the different school of penology na dapat nating malaman. Okay, so we have the classical school. Okay, pag sinabi natin classical school of course class, yan yung tinatawag natin. Ay wait na. So mag-ano na lang siguro tayo. Mag-annotate para ma-ano niyo. Okay, pag sinabi natin classical school of course, meron tayong tinatawag class na free will. Okay? The free will. Okay? Natatabunan ba yung itsura ko or hindi naman? Okay? So, meron tayong tanatawag class na free will. Okay? Pag sinabi natin free will, ibig sabihin, people have the right to choose uh, what is right. Okay? What is right from uh, what is wrong. Okay? From what is wrong. Yan yung tanatawag natin ngayon na classical theory or school of penology. Of course, ma matatakil nyo rin yan sa criminology area. Then of course, pag sinabi naman nating uh, neoclassical school, pag sinabi kasi nating neoclass, of course that is uh, means uh, new. Okay, that's why neoclassical hindi niya gia kontra si classical school, but then again, sinabi niya na children and lunatics, sinabi niya di ba? Children and lunatics, okay? Children, uh, sana yung n and uh, lunatics. Okay. Children and lunatics should not be regarded uh, be regarded as criminal. Okay. So meaning yung children and lunatics ibig sabihin yung mga may sakit sa utak, then yung mga children should not be regarded, okay, should not be. Sorry, not be. Should not be regarded as criminal kasi nga of course hindi nila alam yung nature and consequence ng kanilang ginawa. So yan yung sinabi ni neoclassical school. Pag sinabi naman natin positive school naman class, of course, ng positive school of criminology, nakafocus yan ngayon sa tinatawag natin na 
scientific study of uh, punishment. Okay? Scientific study of punishment or crime. Meaning, titingnan nila ngayon on a scientific basis kung bakit nangyari ang crime at bakit nagawa ng isang uh, particular individual yung crime na yon. Ulitin natin. So the school of penology, we have the classical school, ibig sabihin free will doctrine. Uh, the person has uh, the right to choose what is right from what is wrong. And of course, the neoclassical school or new classical school, children and lunatics should not be regarded as criminal kasi nga hindi nila alam yung nature and consequence ng crime na nakumit niya. Then of course, we have the positive school. Ang positive school naman of penology, that is the uh, scientific study of punishment or crime, wherein i-explain nila ang occurrence or yung mga crimes na nangyari sa society or community natin based on the scientific explanation or based on the scientific basis. Nakuha ba? Nakuha, class? Okay, confirm kung okay na. Okay. Okay, good. Next tayo, uh, X ko mo muna. We are drawings. Okay. So dito tayo class sa justification or, or theories or justification and theories of punishment. So we have the different justification na dapat yung malaman. Of course, we have the retribution of course, expiation or atonement, deterrence or exemplary, protection and reformation. So, explain natin one by one. Pag sinama natin retribution, of course, uh, nakabase yan sa tinatawag natin na uh, harsh punishment ni King Hammurabi Code. Okay? So, di ba? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Kung ano yung ginawa mong krimen, yan yung magiging punishment mo rin. Ano ba? Kapag nang-rape ka, puputulan ka ng ari. So, that is retribution. Wherein, that is the harsh punishment. An eye for an eye, the tooth for a tooth. Yan na rin yung tinatawag na rin na the law of talons ni King Hammurabi Code. Diba? Yung uh, tinatawag na rin na law of talons or retaliation. Then of course, pag sinabi nating retribution, of course, basically that is revenge. Kung ano yung ginawa mo, kung ano yung mga crime na ginawa mo sa, isa, sa kapwa mo, yun yung magiging punishment mo rin. Okay. So kapag pinutulan mo siya ng kamay, puputulan ka rin ng kamay. So that is retribution. Then of course, wala na yan ngayon ka sa. Then of course, ang expiation or atonement, that is the group vengeance. Or pag sinabi natin group vengeance, that is the group revenge naman yan. Then of course, ang deterrence or exemplary, kapag may particular crime na nakumit sa community natin or society, kapag halimbawa sa death penalty, kapag may isa na isubject for death penalty, wala nang susunod pa. Kasi nga, mag-iisip yung mga would-be violators natin kung itutuloy pa nila yung crime na na-commit nila or kailangan nila or iniisip nila. So kasi nga, kapag may nasampulan, it will give lesson to the other person or to the other persons or to the other individual. Kaya tanawag natin yan ng deterrence or exemplary. Sorry. Then of course, we have protection. Pag sinama natin protection class under the justification and theories of punishment that is uh, piniprevent natin or nilalayo natin yung society sa any possible danger na mangyari sa community natin. So that's why para maprotektahan natin ang community, maprotektahan natin yung pamilya natin, of course, uh, piniplace natin or ikukulong natin yung tao na nagkasala. It will be placed in prison or it will be placed in uh, jail. So yan yung tinatawag natin na protection. Then of course, ang reformation naman, ang pinaka-purpose ng reformation is to rehabilitate offenders, meaning ma-reform na siya or as a new law-abiding citizen as they go back to the uh, community kung saan sila nag, uh, nanggaling through the re-entry program of the government. Okay, so ulitin natin. Ang justification ng theories of punishment, again, number one, we have retribution. So basically, uh, it talks about the revenge. Okay? So kung ano yung tinuha mo, yun rin yung magiging kabayaran. Then of course, we have the expiation or atonement that is the group vengeance or the group revenge. Ang deterrence naman or exemplary, it will give lesson or it will set as, as an example to end, uh, other individuals. Now of course, hindi na sila 
or pag-iisipan nila talaga ang paggawa ng treatment. So that is deterrence or exemplary. Then of course, we have protection. Paano natin maprotektahan yung community and society natin? By placing the offender or the prisoners or yung individual na nagkasala in prison or in jail. So yun din yung katawag natin na protection. Then of course, ang reformation naman, that is for the purpose of rehabilitation by making sure na pagbalik niya sa community he is now reformed or he is now a new law-abiding citizen. Then, of course, ang iniingatan natin dyan or ang iniiwasan natin dyan, yung recommission of the crime na baka possible na mag-commit na naman siya ng crime uh, na bago. But of course, uh, babalik at babalik yan sa tinatawag natin na correction. As uh, we say, uh, yan yung tinatawag natin na weakest component or the uh, kaya di ba di ba weakest component kasi nga they they failed to rehabilitate offenders kasi nga as they go back to the community kung saan sila nanggaling nagko-commit na naman sila ng another felony or crime so that's why sinasabi that uh, correction is the weakest component among the components of the criminal justice system okay so nakuha ba naintindihan class naintindihan paki uh, confirm kung naintindihan niyo Okay. Okay, good. So thank you. Okay, next tayo next. Okay, so dito tayo. Of course, class, um yung juridical conditions of penalty may explain natin to sa correction at may explain rin natin to sa criminal law as we go on sa criminal law. Of course, baka next week. Okay, so mga juridical conditions of penalty class, of course, we have the productive, ibig sabihin Uh, kung ano yung punishment or kung ano yung ginawa niyang krimen, dapat may kaakibat yan na tinatawag natin na penalty or punishment. But of course, we will make sure or yung ating criminal law or our law will make sure na yung punishment na ibinibigay, okay, it will not affect yung human integrity. So hindi naman to the point na parang papatayin na natin yung tao na yun. So meaning, so yung pag sinabing productive, Uh, kung ano yung crime na na-commit niya class, dapat merong uh, corresponding punishment yan. Of course, uh, make sure na walang uh, without affecting the human integrity. Then of course, pag sinabi natin commensurate, so tandaan nyo lang yung term na just desert. Okay? Bakit uh, pag sinabi natin commensurate, ibig sabihin just desert? Meaning, the punishment should fit the crime. Again, pag sinabi natin just desert, the punishment should fit the crime. So meaning, kung ano yung crime na nakumit mo, yun rin yung severity or extent ng penalty na ibibigay sa iyo ng batas. Okay? Just desert. Then, pag sabi natin personal, ibig sabihin, ang pag-commit or ang pagbigay ng penalty class or punishment, walang proxy yan. No proxy. Hindi pwede sa pe yung papa mo or mama mo yung mag-proxy. Siya yung ipukulong. Hindi pwede yan. Kasi under the juridical condition of penalty, under the personal, no proxy. No, uh, no one or no one should be uh, imprisoned or should be jailed for the crime committed by other person. So yan yung kanatawag natin na personal. Then pag sinabi naman natin legal, that is in accordance with law or that is uh, based on law, yung punishment or yung penalty na ibinigay sa iyo. Hindi naman sila basta-basta magbibigay kung wala, kung hindi yan prescribed or hindi yan uh, based halimbawa, sa revised penal code or sa special law and so on. Then of course, equal, yung pagbigay ng penalty. Ibig sabihin, uh, fair. Okay, merong fairness. Hindi, uh, hindi tumitingin sa race, religion, status mo, and so on. Ang penalty or punishment natin is fair or equal. Then of course, uh, we have certain. Okay, so pag sinabi natin certain, no one may escape from its effect. Okay, no one may escape from its effect. Ibig sabihin, certain. Kung ginawa mo yan, of course, dapat uh, kailangan mo panindigan yan or kailangan mo, kailangan mo ikulong, kailangan mo pagbayaran yung whatever crimes na nakumit mo. Then, of course, ang correctional. Ang correctional naman, of course, ang uh, purpose ng pagbibigay ng penalty class, not to, not to the point na patay natin yung uh, tao na yon ang purpose niyan is to reform. Ibig sabihin, baka may chance pa na magbago siya or baguhin yung kanyang uh, disposition o yung ugali niya. 
So again, kasi nga diba, nagkasala lang siya. So iko-correct natin ngayon ang way niya class. So yan yung kinatawag natin na reform. Ulitin natin. So we have the juridical conditions of penalty, productive without affecting the human integrity, commensurate naman, just desert, ibig sabihin, the punishment should fit the crime, personal naman, no proxy, no one should be in prison for the crime committed by other person. Legal, in accordance with law. Ang equal, fair. Ang certain, no one may escape from its effect. Ang correctional naman. Of course, ang purpose ng penalty or punishment na binibigay ng government or state is to reform an individual. Ibig sabihin, piniprepare natin siya kapag babalik siya ngayon sa community kung saan siya nanggaling at kung saan siya nabilog. Okay? So yan yung juridical conditions of penalty. Okay? Clear ba class? Clear? Okay. Uh, Pakiconfirm na class? Okay, good. Yes. Okay, next tayo. Rate chain. Okay, so pag-uusapan natin ngayon class ang Bureau of Correction. Okay, so the Bureau of Correction, so yung mga prisons and penal farms in the Philippines na meron tayo sa Bureau of Correction. Okay, so pag sinabi natin prison class, nanggaling yan sa Greco-Roman word presidio. Okay, tanda nyo ha. Nanggaling yan sa Greek word presidio from the word pre. Okay, pag sinabi natin ba pre, ibig sabihin before. Okay, pre before. And of course, sidio means inside. Okay, so that's why ang uh, prison natin nanggaling sa pre, before, and sidio means inside. Okay, before kaya di ba, dati ang kinukulong yung mga nagkasala, dinadala yan sa mga cave class, dinadala yan sa mga isolated uh, places or area para hindi talaga sila makakita ng mga liwanag. So, ganun ka, ka worst ang prison system before, okay, at the old age. Then, of course, ang prison, the, the coin term presidio is uh, synonymous to fence, okay? Uh, na-imagine nyo yung, yung fence or yung kulungan, ano ba, yung ano ng uh, manok, cave or dungeon. Okay? So, yan yung mga presidio. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, naka-isolate. Yan yung uh, tinatawag natin na presidio. Then, of course, pag sinamin natin prison, it is also a penitentiary. It is an institution for the imprisonment. Of course, for incarceration, for the person convicted class of the major crimes or the major or serious crimes na kinatawag natin. So basically, sa, sa Pilipinas, ang uh, prison kanina, sinabi ko, yan yung sa Bureau of Correction kapag three years up yung punishment or penalty. So meaning major or serious offenses ang nakumit niya na crime. So that's why doon siya ilalagak ngayon sa Bureau of Correction. Okay, next slide. Okay, so of course, ang uh, prison, it is a building, of course, uh, with cells or yung kulungan natin sa selda class or places established for the purpose of taking safe custody of the confinement of criminals. Of course, uh, para may iwasan ng pagtakas rin nila. Okay, of course, it is a place of confinement for those charged with convicted or offenses against the laws of the lands. Okay, basically. Ay, bakit tayo? Okay, so ang Bureau of Correction class, of course, uh, ang, uh, that was before, okay, yung pangalan niya dati class, that is uh, Bureau of Prisons, okay, was created by virtue of Reorganization Act or RA-905 uh, or yung Act number 4107, okay? So, but was renamed as the Bureau of Correction class or BU4 under the Department of Justice by virtue of uh, AC or Administrative Code of 1987, So, tandaan nyo class, before, uh, ang tawag pa natin sa Bureau of Correction is Bureau of Reasons. But of course, ang isusunod na natin ngayon or ang susundin na natin ngayon is the Bureau of Correction. Okay? So, yan yung Bureau of Correction. Okay. So, ang Bureau of Corrections class, of course, they have the general supervision and control of our national prisoners or penitentiaries. That's why kanina, di ba, na-explain ko na na ang uh, jurisdiction and control na Bureau of Correction is what they call doon sa mga major crimes or major offenses na nakumit, then basically yung mga three years up or national prisoners or offenders. Of course, 
they are in charge with the safekeeping of our insular prisoners confined therein or committed to the custody of the Bureau of Correction. Okay? So basically, ang trabaho talaga ng uh, Bureau of Correction, they are in charge with the um, supervision and control of our national prisoners or yung mga insular prisoners natin. Okay. So dito tayo, class, sa Old Delivered Prison. Okay? So we have the Old Delivered Prison. That is the first penal institution na meron tayo sa Pilipinas. It was constructed in 1847 for the purpose of central place of confinement for the Filipino prisoners. That is for Suwa, the Section 708, 1708 of the Revised Administrative Code. So ang Old Believed Prison. Kaya nga ngayon wala na yan kasi nga Old Believed Prison. So of course, yung City of Manila, ang uh, storage and class, yung City of Manila exchanges its Montinlupa property with the Bureau of Prisons, originally intended as the site for boys' uh, training school. Today, the Old Believed Prison class is now being used as the Manila City Jail. Again, take note ha? Ang Old Believed Prison as our first penal institution na meron tayo class that was uh, now called, or pangalan na yan ngayon, or that, that is well now called as a Manila City Jail. Kasi nga, nag-exchange. Kasi nga, di ba, ang New Believed Prison ngayon, matatagpuan natin yan sa Montinlupa City. Okay, so ang Manila City Jail, or it is famous as the May Haliga Estate, it is affected by placing offenders in prison so that society will be insured from further criminal depreciations of criminals. So again, ang Old Believed Prison class, that is the first penal institution constructed in 1847. Of course, ang purpose niyan is for the confinement of the general Filipino prisoners. Then ngayon, that is uh, now a Manila City Jail. Okay, Manila City Jail. Yan. Okay, next tayo, next slide. So we have now the San Ramon Prison and Penal Farms. Okay, uh, San Ramon uh, Prison and Penal Farms that was established in August 21, 1869 by virtue of Royal Decree 1865. Of course, ang San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm, matatagpuan natin yan sa Sabuanga City. Basically, tas, tanda niyo ha, kasi sa board exam, ito yung uh, tinatanong nila. Saan or ano sino yung mga kinukulong before sa San Ramon Prison and Penal Farms? So originally, that is the place for confinement for Muslim rebels and of course political prisoners during the Spanish rule. Of course, they are opposed to the uh, treatment or yung sagus ng tinatawag natin ng mga Spaniards before. Okay, so it was destroyed during the Spanish-American War. But of course, it is, was uh, reconstructed or was uh, re-established in 1907. Okay, so ayan. Of course, when it is placed under the supervision of the Bureau of Prisons, of course, they are now started receiving yung mga prisoners na nanggaling sa Mindanao. Ulitin natin. Ang San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm Class, ang original uh, jurisdiction or original purpose niyan is for the confinement of Muslim rebels and political prisoners that uh, oppose class sa mga sa mga programs and uh, and of course yung mga pamamalakad ng Spanish or Spaniards during the Spanish rule. And of course ngayon that is also the, that is also under na sa Bureau of Correction and of course basically kasi sa Zamboanga ang nire-receive nila or tinatanggap nila na prisoners ay nanggaling sa Mindanao. Okay, yan yung San Ramon Prison and Penal Park. Sorry. Okay, next tayo, next slide. Okay, so meron tayong tinatawag na New Believed Prison kasi nga wala na yung Old Believed Prison. Ang New Believed Prison class, it was constructed in 1936. So a national prison with 552 hectares in Montenlupa, Rizal. So ano nyo ito class ha? I-summarize nyo ito mamaya or i-summarize nyo ito of course pagbigay ko ng, ng uh, slide na to or yung mga ating um, review materials mamaya. Pero of course, ang New Believed Prison Class that is uh, sa main building, meron tayong uh, Ham sa Pagdita and Camp Bukang Liwayway. So meron tayong tinatawag dyan na acronym na dapat ninyong tandaan. Okay? When it comes sa tinatawag natin na New Believed Prison, Meron tayong tinatawag na Limen Samet. Okay? Limen Samet. Ang Limen, ibig sabihin, ang, uh, yung, uh, yung mean class na word. Okay? So, uh, yung lina lang muna. Yung LI, that stands for 
camp mukhang liwayway or lawayway. Pwede rin yan. So meaning, ang prisoners na nakatagak dyan class, minimum. Okay? Kaya limit. Then of course, we have samed. Ang samed, ibig sabihin, ang sa camps ang pagita, okay, sa camps ang pagita kasi, is a medium prisoners ang nakatagak dyan or nakakulong dyan ngayon. So yan. Of course, ang... Uh, sa main building natin, ang main building, of course, sila yung mga tinatawag natin na mga maximum, okay? The maximum uh, prisoners. Ulitin natin. So, meron tayong lemen sa med. Ibig sabihin, ang liwayway, minimum prisoners. Kamp sa pagitan naman, of course, that is medium prisoners. That's why we have sa med. Then, of course, ang sa main building, of course, yan yung place for what we call yung mga uh, national or maximum offenders. So again, of course, makikita rin natin class ang uh, liwayway at sa pagita doon pa rin sa na New Believed Prison. Again, ang New Believed Prison, matatagpuan natin yan sa Montinlupa Rizal. Okay? So yan. Uh, of course, overcrowded na yan ngayon. Nakuha na ba class? Nakuha ba? Paki, paki uh, screenshot or ano? Kung nakita na. Uh, take note nyo na yung lemen sa med. Okay, lemen sa med, DYY, minimum, sampagita, medium. Okay, so ganun lang class. Hindi kayo mawawala dyan. Lemen sa med. Okay na ba? Okay na? Bakit walang sumasagot? <laughs> Okay, sige, good. Next tayo, next slide. Okay, so we have, of course, uh, what we call the uh, Iwahig Penal Colony. Okay, so ang Iwahig Penal Colony in farm class, of course, it is located in Puerto Princesa, Palawan, Originally established to house uh, incorrigibles or those prisoners beyond reform. Yung talagang uh, wala na talagang pag-asa or medyo delikado na mga prisoners. Then of course, the institution has no walls. Okay, tandaan nyo class, ang prison without walls, tinatawag natin yan ngayon, na Iwahig Penal Colony and Farm. Take note, ang Iwahig Penal Colony and Farm, that is prison without walls. And it's considered as the best open institution in the world. Again, yung Iwahig Penal Colony and Farm, paborito nila to sa board exam, it is considered as the best open institution in the world. And of course, yung uh, prison without walls, yan yung Iwahig Penal Colony and Farm. So it sits on 36,000 hectare lot and divided into four colonies. Merong uh, Santa Lucia, Ina Inawagan, Uh, multiple, and of course, yung central sub-colony natin. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na Iwahig Penal Colony and Farm. Of course, matatagpuan natin na sa tinatawag natin na Puerto Princesa Palawan. Okay? So, of course, tandaan nyo dyan ang uh, brief discussion or brief description ni Iwahig Penal Colony and Farm. It is the institution that has no walls. And of course, it is considered now Of course, hanggang ngayon, the best open institutions in the world, yung um, Iwahig Penal Colony and Farm, it is divided into four colonies, Santa Lucia, Inawagan, Motipol, and Sub-Colony. So, yan. Okay, so we have the CIW or Correctional Institution for Women. Ang CIW or uh, Correctional Institution for Women, of course, that was established on November 27, 1929 in an 18 hectare lot allocated at Mandaylaw, yung Rizal. Of course, ngayon, meron na rin sa Tapi Color, sa Dabao Penal Colony and Farm, yung Correctional Institution for Women. So again, of course, yung um, uh, Correctional Institution for Women or CIW that is intended for the confinement of women convicts. Okay, ulitin natin, ulitin natin ang CIW or Correctional Institution for Women. 
that is the institution intended for women or women convicts that is located in Mandaluyong Rizal. Of course, uh, kailangan din natin ng separation sa mga prisoners natin. Okay? So, prisoners natin. So, that's why yan yung tinatawag natin na correctional institution for women. Okay, next tayo. Next slide. Okay. So, we have the Dabao Fennel Colony and Farm. Okay, sa so Dabao, or so yung Dapicol na tinatawag natin. Ang Dapao Penal Colony and Farm, it was founded by General Paulino Santos Glass. Okay, so ang Dapicol was established on January 21, 1932. Uh, that is in compliance with the Act Number 3732. And of course, it was divided into uh, sub-colonies sa Panabo and of course, yung Kapalong sub-colony. Okay, nakapunta na rin ako doon. So yan yung tanatawag natin na Dabao Penal Colony and Farm. Again, Ang Dabao Penal Colony and Farm, it was founded by General Paulino Santos. And of course, tanawag natin yan na Dapi Col. So that is uh, divided in uh, two sub-colonies, yung Panabo and Kapalong sub-colony. Kung titignan ninyo class, ang Dabao Penal Colony and Farm, okay, so ang Dabao Penal and Farm, so yan yung tanatawag natin na, okay, so sila rin or dyan rin ng gagaling class ang mga mostly or yan yung uh, yan ang gagaling ang most of yung kita or yung uh, bumubuhay or nagpapakain sa mga prisoners all throughout the Philippines. Yan sa Dabao Penal Colony and Farm kasi may, uh, may mga saging yung class or sagingan sila class and so on. May question dito, anong kaso ng women coach? Ang kaso nila of course class, more than three years kasi nga ang uh, correctional institution for women that is a um, what we call papasok yan sa Bureau of Correction. Okay? So, ayan. So, hindi naman nakaspecify basta more than three years of course sa CIW or Correctional Institution for Women para hindi kayo mahirapan of course basically for women victims. Then we have the Sablayan Penal Colony okay, and Farm. Ang Sablayan Penal Colony and Farm class that is uh, built or that was built of course, in uh, Occidental Mindo Mindoro on September 26, 1954. That was on Proclamation Number 72. 16,000 yung hectares plus na kinakatayuan ng Sablayan Penal Colony and Farm. Again, ulitin natin, ang Sablayan Penal Colony and Farm that is uh, built in, uh, on September 26 sa uh, Occidental Mindoro. Okay, so yan. Okay, so we have the later regional prison. Okay, so ang later regional prison class, of course, ngayon, uh, wala na to siya. So, titinan natin mamaya kung ano yun. Okay, ang later regional prison class, it was constructed in Abuyo Leyte. It was established on January 16, 1972 through Proclamation 1101 to confine prisoners from Visayas region naman. Of course, uh, mamaya kung bakit na wala na yung later regional prison natin. Okay, so... Uh, of course, as part of the history, itatanong pa rin yan, yung late regional prison. And of course, yung sa ilo-ilo natin. Okay. So kung, ta kung tandaan ninyo, so we have the uh, Silids of Trades. Kung mag-base tayo ngayon, class, sa tinatawag natin na, okay, so we have Silids. Uh, Silids of Trades. Okay. So we have silids class. Okay, so ibigay ninyo ah silids. Okay, so ibigay natin uh, ibigay ninyo sa comment section kung saan natin matatagpuan tong mga to. Okay, so meron tayong tinatawag na San Ramon. Okay, wag muna kla. Uh, may may nasagot na ba? Ah, kumikidlat. Okay. Okay, so we have the San Ramon. San Ramon, we have the Iwahi, Penal Colony and Farm, the Leyte, then we have Iloilo. Okay, so then we have Dapicol, then we have the uh, Sablayan. Okay, class. So saan natin matatagpuan, class, si San Ramon Penal Farm? Okay, saan lugar, basically, or specifically rather, Saan natin matatagpuan si San Ramon Penal Farm? Okay, sundon niya. Uh, ah? uh, 
sa Buanga? Bakit may S ng sa Buanga? Okay, again, saan natin matatagpuan si uh, what they call si San Ramon? Ay, uh, no, nabaliktad pala ito class. Sablayan para ito, di ba? Uh, Sablayan, sorry. Sablayan. Then, San Ramon. Okay, saan natin matatagpuan si San Ramon? Of course, sa Sambuanga. Okay, Sambuanga City. Okay. So, how about naman ka? Saan natin matatagpuan ngayon? Si uh, Sablayan Penal Colony and Farm. Saan natin matatagpuan si Sablayan? Okay, so Occidental Mendoro. Okay, so good. Okay, how about naman saan natin matatagpuan si Iwahig? Saan natin matagpuan si Iwahig? Please sa answer. Okay, very good. Sa Palawan. Puerto Princess sa Palawan. Ay, pawalan. Palawan. Okay, so how about si Leyte? Si Leyte naman. Saan natin matatagpuan si Leyte? Okay, so the course sa Abuyog Leyte. Abuyog, sorry. Okay, so how about naman class? Si Iloilo. Okay, Iloilo uh, Jail na doon. Of course, ngayon museum na yan. But still is part of our uh, history. Saan matatagpuan si Iloilo? Okay, yung Iloilo natin, uh, yung Iloilo natin, Iloilo Farm or Iloilo, uh, okay, of course, sa uh, Iloilo City. Okay, Iloilo rin, of course. <laughs> okay, how about yung sa Dapicol? Okay, how about Dapicol class? Okay, how about Dapicol? Of course, sa Davao. Okay, so yan, Davao. Davao City. Or Davao. Okay, so again, class, ang tandaan nyo lang, class, under sa ating, um, what do you call this, yung ating mga penal colonies and farms in the Philippines, uh, historically, or based on history, and of course, yung, uh, yung Leyte and Iloilo, wala na yan ngayon, pero as part of the history ang pag-uusapan natin, so nandyan pa rin yan. Sorry. So, ang tandaan yung na-acronym class is yung uh, what we call silids of fates. Okay? So, silids of fates. So, halimbawa, yung S that stands for sablayan, of course, yung O that is Occidental Mindoro or Occidental Mindoro. Yung I that is Iwahig, while yung P, of course, matatakuan natin yung Iwahig sa Palawan. Yung L that stands for what we call Leyte, of course, matatakuan natin sa Abuyog. Yung I that stands for Iloilo, sorry, that stands for Iloilo, then of course, of course, sa Iloilo City rin. Then of course, Iloilo Province rather. Then we have the Dabao, Penal Colony and Farm or Dapicol. Matatagpuan natin yan sa Dabao. Then ang San Ramon, okay, San Ramon, Penal Colonies and Farm, matatagpuan natin yan ngayon sa Sambuanga City. Okay, so again pa sa, so Silids of Fades. Okay, Silids of Fades. So please copy this one. Okay, so kapag okay na class, so makaproceed na tayo sa next slide. Okay, please copy. Kung okay na, pakipag-confirm sa comment section. Okay na ba? Okay na ba? Okay. Sige, next. Wait lang, sir. Okay, wala pa. Ah, sige. Sige, uh, ano muna? Isulat or i-picture?
Okay, so mamaya kapag uh, 7, 7 p.m., o mag-break muna tayo ng uh, uh, 15 minutes, of course, para, of course, ano yung, ano ninyo, ma-refresh. Then balik agad. Okay, sige. Next tayo. Anong oras na? Uh, 6.52. Okay, so mayroon na tayo 8 minutes. Okay na ba? Okay na? Wala na? Okay na, sir. Okay na, sige. Okay, so again na, si Lids of Tades. Si Lids of Tades. Next tayo. Okay, so sino ba ba yung tinatawag natin class na prisoner? Okay, pag sinama natin prisoner, of course, ayan, a prisoner is a person who is under the custody of the local authority. So any person who is or by reason of his criminal sentence or by decision issued by the court may be deprived of his liberty or freedom. That's why tinawag na natin ngayon na PDL class or persons deprived of liberty yung tanatawag na na prisoner. Okay, so yan. Then of course, a prisoner is any person detained or confined in jail or prison for the commission of a criminal offense or convicted and serving in a penal institution. So prisoner yan. Basically, yan yung uh, may uh, kapag prisoner ang tawag sa'yo, of course, medyo major or serious yung crimes na na-commit. Okay, so yan yung tanatawag natin na prisoner. Okay, next. So we have the classification of prisoners class. We have the detention prisoners. We have the sentence prisoners. And of course, we have the prisoners for safekeeping. Uh, sir, antayin ko na lang po mag-send kasi nakagumos si Mama Nat Wi-Fi. Pakikilat ko, sir. Okay, don't worry. So, uh, ano nyo na lang. Hintayin nyo na mamaya sa Telegram kasi ang don't ipapasa ang ating reportings. Okay, so balikan nyo lang, class. Then kahit yung naka-attend kayo dito, class, kahit present kayo mamaya, Balikan nyo rin or i-play nyo lang yung video ko or i-play nyo rin uh, mag-ising kayo bukas para mas, ano, mas uh, maritain. So again, we have the classification of prisoners. We have detention prisoners. pag detention prisoners, persons committed for investigation or trial. Detention yan. Ibig sabihin, wala pang final verdict or final judgment sa kanyang kaso. Okay? Detention prisoners ang tawag natin dyan. Then we have the sentence prisoners. Yun yung mga persons committed to jails or by prison to serve sentence after final conviction by a competent court for the commission of the crime. Yan yung tinatawag na na sentence prisoners. Ibig sabihin, meron ng final judgment or final verdict na binigay yung competent court kasi nga nagkasala siya. So yan yung mga sentence prisoners natin. Then we have the prisoners for safekeeping. Ang prisoners for safekeeping, of course, yan yung mga includes for non-criminals class who are detained in order to protect the community against their harmful behavior or to protect them for any danger. Hindi lang actually class, mga criminal ang sila safekeeping. Ano ba, yung sarili ninyo or ikaw mismo. Kung sa tingin mo, makakause ka ng danger or nakapagbigay ka ng disturbance sa community mo, kung hindi mo makontrol ang sarili mo, uh, baka sa tingin mo, parang hindi ko talaga makulong ng sarili ko na baka mapatay ko siya. So magpa-safekeeping ka class. Okay yan. Prisoners for safekeeping ang tawag sa sa'yo. You are not or you are non-criminal. Hindi ka criminal class. But of course, ang gusto mo lang mangyari is to protect the community from the uh, possible danger na makumit mo or magawa mo. So that is prisoners for safekeeping. Again, ang detention prisoners, wala pang final verdict sa kaso niya. Ibig sabihin, naghihintay siya. So ongoing yung trial and hearing. Ang sentence prisoners naman, there is a final verdict or final judgment na binigay yung korte, meaning uh, isa-serve niya na kasi nga nagkasala talaga siya or napatunayan na nagkasala talaga siya sa korte or sa batas natin. Then of course, we have prisoners for safekeeping. Ang corpus niyan is to protect the community, not just criminal la, ang pinofers ni safekeeping natin, or to protect the community from the possible threats or the possible danger na may inflict niya sa community. So that's why it is a prisoner's for safekeeping. Okay, so dito tayo class. So we have the different classification of sentence prisoners. Ibig sabihin, meron ng final verdict or final judgment yung naturang prisoners na to. So kaya nga, tinatawag natin yan ngayon na sentence prisoners. So we have the insular or national prisoners. 
Okay, so pag sinabi natin insular prisoners, ibig sabihin, uh, yung punishment or penalty niya na natandaan, ay, wait na mo. Okay, so wait lang pa sa in a minute. Okay, so we have the different classifications of sentence prisoners. Ibig sabihin, they have already a final judgment or final verdict sa mga kaso nila. Of course, we have the insular prisoners, the provincial prisoners, the city prisoners, and the municipal prisoners. Ang tandaan nyo lang dyan, sa classification of sentence prisoners class, kapag sa municipal prisoners, ang tandaan nyo ng acronym dyan is M16. Okay? Ang tanda nyo dyan is M16. So, meaning, ang M that stands for municipal, while yung 1, of course, and 6, of course, ang M16, that is uh, 1 day to 6 months. Okay? So, yan yung tanatawag natin ng municipal prisoners. Then, ang city prisoners, tanda nyo na acronym dyan, or um, mnemonics na ginamit natin, is C13. Ibig sabihin, yung punishment na, uh, na oh, sorry, sorry, Ang punishment na na-claim niya or na binigay sa kanya ng korte, okay, ano naman yung class? C13. Okay, magbigay tayo dito sa comment section. So, paganahin natin ang comment section. Anong ilang years ang binibigay sa city prisoner? Yung C13 na nakalagay dyan. Okay, so one day to three years. Okay, how about naman ang provincial prisoners? Okay, so how about yung provincial prisoners, yung P613? Dito lang kayo class, tumingin, P613. Ano naman yung 613? Okay, so ano naman yung P613? Okay, 6 months and 1 day to 3 years. Okay, very good. That is 6 months and 1 day to 3 years. Okay, how about naman yung tinatawag natin na insular prisoners or national prisoners? Of course, that is 3 years and 1 day to life imprisonment. Ulitin natin na. Ang uh, classification of prisoners class na tinatawag natin, we have the municipal prisoners. Ang municipal prisoners, of course, M, the stands for municipal, 16, M16. Ibig sabihin, one day to six months. Ang city prisoners naman, C13. Okay, so one day to three years. Ang provincial prisoners naman, six months, of course, plus one day to three years. Then, of course, ang insular prisoners natin, of course, ang penalty or punishment niya is uh, three years and one day to life imprisonment. Okay? So, yan yung classification of sentence prisoners natin, class. Okay? So, ayan. So, mag-break muna tayo, class, for uh, 15 minutes. Okay? 15 minutes. Then, babalik tayo. Huwag lang mag ba? Huwag lang mag -leave. So, ayan. Mag, mag uh, ano muna kayo? mag or mag -kape. So, ayan. So, para ma-refresh ang utak natin. Kasi uh, hindi pangit rin na walang, uh, ano, walang break. Okay? So, thank you. Uh, wag lang mag-live sa ating, ano, wag lang mag-live sa ating live. So, yes, pwede kayo muna kumain. Okay? So, ayan, konti lang naman. Ay, konti lang naman. Uh, dal dalihan nyo lang ka sa, uh, ano lang, maximum sa 20 minutes. And after that, pabalik tayo. Okay. Thank you and bye.
Okay, so ayan. Okay. So again, let me uh, share my screen. Ay, sorry. Dito na pala. Okay, so as a continuation, nandito na ba? Ay, 25. So hindi natin konti class. Sorry. Okay, class. So, oh, ayan. Let's uh, proceed now. Tating discussion. So, para medyo mahaba pa. Konti. Okay, so next slide. So, mag-end tayo ng 8.30 or 9. So, titingnan natin mamaya. Okay, so natapos na natin yung classification of penalty. Dito naman tayo sa classification of prisoners uh, according to the degree of security uh, needed. So, of course, meron tayong super maximum. Okay, super maximum we're in yung uh, uh, groups of prisoners na nakalagay diyan or nakalagay diyan. Of course, sila yung tinatawag natin na special group of prisoners. They are intractable, incorrigible and highly dangerous person. Okay? So highly dangerous hindi na yan pwedeng pagkatiwalaan yan sa labas. So of course, they are source of constant disturbances even in maximum security prison. So Yung super maximum security prisoners natin, of course, they wear all uh, orange color of uniform. So, tatlo lang naman. So, again, ang super maximum class under uh, our Bureau of Correction. So, they are highly dangerous person. Hindi sila pwedeng lumabas or hindi sila pwedeng pagkatiwalaan sa labas kasi, again, sila yung uh, uh, yung cause or sa kanila nisisimula yung mga disturbances and other, um, and other of course, mga illegal activities, yung pag uh, ano doon yung rambulan sa loob ng uh, prisuan. So, dyan na sila yung my boss. So, super maximum yan. Then, uh, we have the, the maximum <coughs> sorry, the maximum security prisoners. Tanda niyo ang mga na under dyan or yung uh, nandyan sa maximum security prisoners natin, those uh, who are sentenced to death, of course, uh, aside from that, yung mga minimum sentence is 20 years of imprisonment. So, dyan sa maximum security offenders. Then, of course, yung mga detainees or mga remand inmates who sentence is 20 years and above. And, of course, yung mga uh, sentence is under the review of the Supreme Court kasi yung Supreme Court na lang yung last uh, resort nila. Of course, meron pa yung appeal, yung kaso nila. So, 
titingnan pa kung pwede pang makalaya or may possibility na pwede pa siyang lalaya. So pwedeng ilagay diyan sa maximum security prisoners. And of course, yung mga those pending cases na more than 20 years yung punishment ang binigay ng batas natin. Okay, aside from that, so mga escapees, yung mga um, uh, tawag nito, uh, umalis sa kulungan, recidivist, yung um, nakakreate or nakakumit ng crimes which is embraced in the same title of the revised penal code. Halimbawa, uh, for the first time, nakakumit niya na crime is homicide. Then for the second time, murder naman. So ang homicide and murder, they're the same or embraced in the same title which is uh, crimes against person. Then of course, ang habitual delinquents, yung in the period of 10 years, nakakumit sila ng crime uh, for the third time or they're convicted for the third time. Of course, yung particular crime lang the falsification of documents, robbery, staff, theft, serious and physical injury, as the, and then the least serious physical injury. Don't worry, so ma-explain na natin to sa criminal law and jurisprudence. Then of course, yung those under safekeeping or disciplinary punishment, then those confined as uh, at DRD. So take note, ang DRD wala na yan ngayon. So ang napalit sa DRD that is, uh, sorry, ang napalit sa RDC ngayon, that is DRD na. That is the rectorate for reception, for reception and diagnostics. Okay. Okay, take note class, wala na yung tinatawag natin na RDC or uh, hmm. uh, within 10 years. Uh, within 10 years class, uh, take note yung sa habitual delinquents. Within 10 years nakakomit siya ng, pas, uh, ng crimes or he is convicted for the third time within that period of 10 years. So again, yung um, RDC class, wala na yan ngayon. So ang pangalan niya na is DRD or Directorate for Reception and Diagnostics. So ang function ng DRD class, of course, to um, classify o magkakaroon muna dyan ng quarantine. Meaning, titingnan muna kung may may uh, disease ba or may um, contagious disease yung nakakahawa yung isang prisoner before siya ihalo sa ibang prisoners. So yan yung trabaho ng RDC or yung uh, Directorate for Reception and Diagnostic before, tawag sa kanya, is Reception of, of the Diagnostic Center. Then of course, yung those who are diagnosed as criminally insane or with severe emotional or personality disorders that makes them hazardous to fellow inmates or the staff. Okay, so yan. Yeah. Uh, wait lang, i-clear natin. Okay, so... Okay. But of course, yung mga characteristics of uh, maximum security inmates. Again, the characteristics of maximum security inmates. So we have what they call the, uh, the of course, uh, tignan nyo class, escape could be dangerous to the public or to the security of the state. Kaya yung uh, iniwasan, kaya hindi sila tinapayagan na magtrabaho or lumabas sa, of course, sa prison cells natin or sa selda kasi nga, okay, so wait lang ka sa ating kung ay may nag-chat pala yung review director. Based on facts. Okay, di ba? So, nabigla naman ako may nag um, may nag message akala ko sino uh, ano pala siya uh, senior high o may binibenta daw ako ng libro kasi mag-advanced study siya gusto niya mag-criminology. O di ba? <laughs> so, advanced na ngayon yung mga students. Ah. Okay, escape could be dangerous to the public or to the security of the state. So, yan yung mga maximum security inmates natin. Okay, so yan. And of course, yan, uh, aside from that, meron tayong tinatawag, it consists of constant mga troublemakers na sabi ko na kanina, but of course, yung dangerous as the super maximum. Kung i-base natin or compare natin mga super maximum sa maximum lang, of course, mas less sila na dangerous time compare sa super maximum kasi to, to the extreme, yung mga super maximum naman class. So very dangerous naman yun sila. Of course, yung under the maximum security inmates class, their movements are restricted and they are not allowed to 
work outside or hindi sila talaga pinapayagan na magtrabaho sa labas kasi nga di ba baka sila pa yung cause ng gulo sa loob or sila pa yung cause ng patayan doon sa loob so they are confined at the maximum security prison or at the NBB main building or other assigned the building a panel farm and they wear orange color or tangerine uniform take note class tandaan niyo ang color of uniform na sinusuot nila kapag wala sa choices si tinatawag natin na orange of course ang isasagot niyo is tangerine color of uniform okay so yan yung characteristics of uh, security inmates natin Okay, of course, ang medium security uh, uh, offenders natin or security uh, prisoners, patay, umulan na naman. Okay, so those uh, whose minimum sentence is less than 20 years of imprisonment, aside from that, yung uh, mga youth offenders or detainees or B-months inmates whose sentence is below 20 years, those who are below 18 years of age regardless of their uh, sentence and cases. Then, of course, yung mga offender with, uh, with two or more records of escape and at least eight years of service and with one year of service and five years of service, respectively. Okay. So, tandaan nyo lang, class. Pag sinabi natin sa, sa medium, ito yon yung tandaan nyo, yung nature. Pag sinabi natin sa medium, those who cannot be trusted in open condition and pose lesser danger than maximum security prisoners in case the escape. So compare sa maximum security prisoners and super maximum security prisoners, of course, uh, they pose lesser danger. Hindi naman talaga sila, uh, meron pa rin danger, pero ano na, less na, kumbaga, hindi na talaga masyado. Kung maka, ano man sila, maka tumakas man sila, of course, hindi talaga masyadong, uh, uh, ano yan, state of uh, necessity yung kailangan natin. So yan yung sa medium. Then, of course, it consists of groups of prisoners who may be allowed to work outside the fence or walls of the penal institution under guards with or with escort. Pinapayagan sila class unless merong nakabantay na mga guards o mga warden natin, of course, yung mga escorts nila. So, they occupy the medium security prisoners or camp sa pagitan na tanawag natin kanina. Kaya meron tayong tanatawag na limin sa min. Ang liwayway, that is minimum, and of course, sa pagita that is medium. Sa, kung titignan ninyo, sa super maximum, and of course, yung uh, media, yung maximum natin, ang sinusuot nila na, na uniform, that is orange, kapag wala si orange, or tangerine. Yung isagot ninyo. So of course, they wear blue color of uniforms. Pagdating naman ngayon sa medium prisoners. Okay? So yan, medium prisoners. Again, matatagpuan niya sila class sa CAM Sampagita in the New Believed Prison or the BNBP. So generally, they are employed as agricultural workers. It includes prisoners who serve at least 10 years inside a maximum security prisoner. Okay, prison. So meaning, uh, binaba na siya doon. Medyo trusted na siya konti. Okay, so that's why nandiyan na siya sa medium security uh, prisoner. And of course, we have the minimum security offenders class. Of course, they are reasonably trusted to serve their sentence under less restricted conditions. Okay? So yan yung mga minimum, of course, pwede na silang payagan or hindi na masad ng uh, hindi na kailangan ng guards when they are working outside the prison cells. Kailangan lang nila ng less or they are uh, less monitored or they are less uh, restricted pagdating sa uh, kulungan. Okay? So, yan yung uh, isang uh, may hindi pa na nakapasok. Bakit may nakabalik lang. Ah, okay. Kakabalik lang pala ng kuryente. So, ayan. So, hmm? so take note ka sa yung mamaya magbigay ako ng instruction. Okay? So, under this category, sila yung tinatawag natin ng uh, the severe physical handicap as ratified by the chief medical officer of the prison. So, yan yung mga uh, minimum security offenders natin. Then, of course, uh, those who are 65 years old and above without pending case and whose convictions are not on appeal. So, papasok yan sa minimum security offenders. Take note, mamaya class, ha, before kayo matulog, panuorin yung video na to or kung hindi yung mapanood, na uh, i-play nyo na lang bukas ng umaga kasi nga Sunday wala tayong uh, lecture bukas babalik tayo sa Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. 
Okay, kasi ang um, uh, ano na yan, I- 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 diretso natin yan class kasi aalis ako papuntang Cavite uh, sa 21. Okay, 21. So, ayan. So, dapat everyday na wala pa akong lecture so dapat present kayo doon. Okay, so para mas maubos talaga natin. Okay, so dapat ang goal natin October or November natapos na natin lahat ng area para magkakaroon na talang tayo ng mastery. Magkaroon tayo ng mga Q&A. So, ganun. And of course, uh, of course, those who have served one half of their minimum sentence or one third of their maximum sentence naman, excluding hindi kasali class, yung mga good conduct time allowance kasi uh, yung mga minus pa yan, yung good conduct time allowance natin. And of course, those who only have six months or more to serve before the expiration or the, of their maximum sentence, before they can, they can be released to the community. So yan yung mga minimum security offenders. Then, of course, ang characteristic class ng minimum security offenders class. So, this group includes prisoners who can be trusted, again, sinabi ko nina na ulit lang, to report their work assignments without the presence of guards or yung tinatawag na rin na escorts. So, they occupy the minimum security prison camp or yung tinatawag na rin na camp bukang liwayway and wear brown collar uniform. So, yan yung characteristics of uh, minimum security offenders natin. Ulitin natin. Ang uh, super maximum of course orange or tangerine ang um, ang super uh, ang maximum natin of course steel pa rin then of course we have the medium we have blue and of course yung minimum naman brown take note ang minimum security offenders in summary they can be trusted without uh, without supervision from our guards of course or our escorts while the medium naman class of course ang medium <clears throat> uh, lesser yung kanilang um, penalty or lesser yung uh, danger na ma-post nila in case may nangyari or nakataka sila sa, sa kulungan. But of course, they can work outside with the presence of the guards and escorts. While the maximum, of course, uh, they are dangerous as well. But compared to the super maximum, hindi mas sila masyado. Kung baga less lang siya. So ang maximum and super maximum, of course, they are not allowed talaga totally to work outside or to be outside or to be... Uh, outside of the prison cells or sa kulungan nila. So, yan yung mga kaibahan nila, class. Okay. Of course, uh, yung uh, minimum, of course, they can be uh, be trusted to serve their sentence in an open conditions. Kaya, di ba, yung ibang mga prison cells natin, class, uh, minsan nga, hindi na sila naka-uniform ng brown. Okay? So, akala mo doon sila yung natutrabaho doon sa kulungan, pero hindi, mga ano yun, mga minimum security offenders. Actually, class, uh, nakapunta ako ay sa, PAG, ay sa PMA, sa Philippine Military Academy. Eh, I-post ko lang. Ay, uh, next, ano natin, pakita ko lang. Merong ano doon, merong uh, in collaboration with the Bureau of Correction. So, merong uh, kulungan na doon sa loob. Pero, ang sentence nila, five years na, five years na lang yung isiserve nila doon sa kulungan before sila marirelease sa community. So, tinanansfer sila ng Bureau doon sa PMA. Kasi nga, para medyo mabawasan yung mga nakakulong na na-handle nila. So, ganun kay importante Okay? So, yung collaboration rin ng uh, different agencies. Kasi nga, di ba? Ang number one uh, problem, kasi tandaan nyo ha, kasi itatanong nito sa board exam, the number one uh, problem na ina-encounter ng tinatawag natin sa, uh, sa prison cells natin or sa prison system na meron tayo is the overcrowding or the overcrowded yung mga kulungan natin. So halimbawa, 10,000 na sana yung kapa- eh, 2,000 na sana yung capacity ng bureau, yung uh, um, Bilibid Prison, naging 10,000 na or naging 20,000 na and more than that pa ngayon. So yan yung tinatawag natin na overcrowded or overcrowding is the main uh, problem na kinakarap ngayon sa ating uh, Philippine prison system. Okay, so natapos na natin ang view course. So let's explain now the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology naman. Okay, so ang BGMP natin, yan yung gumagamit ng term na jail. Kasi kanina sinabi ko, ang um, view course, ang ginagamit niya na term class is prison. So sa jail naman o sa Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, ang ginagamit niya na term is what we call kusog kaayo. Uh, ang ulan. Ah, okay. Uh, yung iba klasa na hindi nakapasok ngayon kasi nagka-problema sa signal. So they can review yung ating uh, ano lang, 
ating recording. Mamaya abangan ninyo of course after after ng uh, ating discussion, hindi agad-agad nandiyan na yung recording kasi nagpo-process pa yan class. So mga 30 minutes, okay, yung pinaka-maximum before pumapasa sa Telegram kasi automatic papasa na yan doon. Okay? So pwede yung iulitin uh, yung mga mahina yung signal. Of course, kahit yung mga stable connection, ulitin nyo pa rin. Repetition is the mother of all learning. Okay? So yan. Okay, next. Pag sinabi natin jail, of course, it is the institution Sorry. for confinement of persons who are awaiting final disposition of their criminal cases and also for service of their sentence kapag yung tinatawag natin na three years. Okay? Three years uh, below. Okay? So, yan yung tinatawag natin na jail. Kasi three years up, that is the jurisdiction now of the Bureau of Correction. So, ang jail, it is also a place uh, wherein for locking up a person who are convicted of a minor offenses or felonies who are uh, going to serve yung short sentences class as prescribed by a competent court. Or of course, yung mga person awaiting trial or hinihintay pa nila yung final verdict of their cases. Or yung mga kaso nila is under uh, investigation or under review. Of course, yung jail na term that is derived from the Spanish word haula, okay, o haulo rather, which means cage, di ba? Uh, kahit ngayon na ginagamit pa natin, pumasok ka sa haula. Okay? So, cage. Okay? So, yan yung tinatawag natin na jail. Okay? So, yun. Okay. Then, we have the what we call the, the types of jail class. Okay? Very important rin yung uh, types of jails. Ang lock-up jails, of course, it is a security facility commonly class na matatagpuan natin sa mga police stations. Ginagamit yan for temporary confinement of individual that is held for an investigation. Of course, hindi lang yung mga individuals na may ginawang krimen, aside from that, pwede, pwede rin pumasok or pwede rin natin doon ipasok yung mga non-criminals wherein they cannot control themselves or their selves kapag uh, yung anger or yung uh, anger management nila. So, lock-up jails ang tanatawag natin dyan. Then we have the ordinary jails. Okay. Ang ordinary jails naman that is commonly used to detain convicted criminals offenders who serve less than three years uh, of punishment or three years of penalty provided by the law. While the workhouse, yung jail, uh, yung jail farms or crumbs, that is the facility that houses minimum custody offenders who are serving short sentences or those who are undergoing constructed work programs. So it provides full employment of prisoners, remedial services, and constructive leisure time activities. So yan yung mga types of jails na meron tayo. Okay, so the, the lack of jails, ordinary jails, workhouse jails or farms, and so on. So yan yung mga types of jails. Okay, so yan. Okay, next. Uh, wait lang ka sa mag-reply uh, mag lang ako sa Ah, okay, so mamaya na lang. Okay, so good. Yung accommodation. Okay, so let's proceed now sa tinatawag natin na provincial uh, jails. Okay, so ang provincial jails naman, of course in the Philippines, it is not under the jurisdiction of the Bureau of Corrections. So they are managed and controlled class by the provincial government or the LGU, yung local government unit natin. So yan yung mga tinatawag natin. Or yan, <clears throat> sorry, yan yung trabaho or yan yung jurisdiction ng provincial jails. Okay? They are not under the jurisdiction 
of the Bureau of Corrections, but they're under the management and supervision of the local government units or the provincial gov government of respective provinces. Okay, so yan yung provincial jails. Okay, so we have the uh, what we call the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. So take note, ang BGMP is exercises supervision and control over cities, municipalities, and of course, yung mga district jails class throughout the country. So nag-explain to na kanina, di ba? So madali niyo na lang makuha kasi nga uh, may summary kanina. Then ngayon, nandito na tayo sa detailed discussion. So of course, uh, ang uh, BGMP, nakasali yan yan sa tribe bureau natin. So that's why ang enactment ng Bureau of Jail Management and Penology is under the Republic Act 6975. And of course, it operates as a line bureau under the Department of Interior and Local Government. Line bureau siya class. Okay? So yan yung BGMP. Of course, yung powers nila. Okay? So yan yung tanatawag natin. Eh, sorry. Okay. So the bureau shall exercise supervision and control over district, city, and municipal uh, jails. Yan yung. And of course, aside from that, okay, sorry. Okay, aside from that, of course, yung uh, BGMP natin class, we have the rank classification of the BGMP. So please uh, screenshot this one so para makita ninyo. So we have yung rank, position, or title, then of course, the appointing authority. So tanda ninyo yung uh, position or the highest position class na tinatawag natin under the BGMP is, of course, tinawag natin na the chief of the BGMP. Of course, ang rank niya is director. Okay? Then, of course, yung pinakamababa, that is uh, JO1 or jail officer 1, to, uh, of course, yan yung mga, ano natin, mga non-commission officers under the BGMP. Ang pinakamababa is the jail officer 1 hanggang ang pinakamatas dyan sa non-commission officer under the BGMP is the... Senior Jail Officer 4. Of course, ang inspector, mga official na yan sila ng BGMP inspector hanggang sa director. Ang uh, position ng uh, SGO4 to JO1 class or from JO1 hanggang sa SGO4 that is Jail Wardens or Jail Guards rather. Then ang Senior Inspector and of course yung Senior and uh, Inspector and Senior Inspector Warden yan sila hanggang sa tinatawag natin na Chief Inspector Okay, so yan yung uh, uh, yung position nila. Magkaiba ang rank sa position or title class. Ha? So I hope nakuha nyo na yan sa mga video ko. Nabigyan na kayo ng idea kung ano yung kaibahan ng position and title. Then of course, yung uh, superintendent, meron siyang uh, position na assistant regional director hanggang si ka, uh, same as true with senior superintendent. Ang chief superintendent natin na rank ko, that is the deputy chief, of the BGMP, bisabin the second in command in the Bureau of Jail Management and Technology. And of course, the first in command or yung pinakahead ng Bureau of Jail Management and Technology, of course, that is the chief of BGMP. Ang uh, mag-appointing uh, authority or mag-appoint class sa director ng Bureau of uh, ng BGMP is the secretary of the DILG hanggang sa tinatawag natin na inspector, same uh, appointing authority. Then of course, the chief of the BGMP ang mag appoint sa mga SJO1, uh, SJO4 rather hanggang sa pababa sa JO1. So yan yung mga rank classification class ng BGMP natin. Again, the highest rank in the BGMP is director. The highest position in the BGMP is the chief of the Bureau of Jail Management and Technology. The lowest rank in the BGMP class, of course, the JO1, or the jail officer one, of course, the lowest position or title is the jail guards. Okay, I hope it's clear. Okay, next. Okay, so dito tayo, class, isa-isahin natin. So, ang duties and responsibilities. Ang warden, of course, uh, he is the director in charge with the direction, coordination, and control of the jail in general. So they are responsible for security, safety, or security, safety, discipline, and uh, well-being of inmates. Of course, ang office of the warden, we organize the following units. Meron tayong intelligence and investigation team. Okay, so they are in charge with the uh, to gather, to collate, 
and submit intelligence to information of the office of the warden on matter regarding the jail condition. Kung ano ba talaga, kung may uh, breach in security ba or may kailangan bang ayusin. Then of course, we have the jail inspectorate section naman when in, uh, they are in charge sa mga facilities, uh, prisoners, and of course, mag magbibigay na sila ng report annually. Okay? Then of course, we have the public relation officers uh, to uh, maintain public relation to obtain the necessary adequate public support. Kailangan nila mag-establish ng rapport sa community wherein makakahanap rin sila or makapag uh, mag ask rin sila ng tulong sa ating uh, community or sa ating uh, public. So yan yung duties and responsibilities ng uh, warden natin. Yes, isi-send uh, isi natin mamaya ang uh, yung uh, ating uh, live after this ano after this uh, discussion. Okay, then of course ang assistant warden natin class, uh, they are, they are in charge or they undertakes the development of a systematic process of treatment. Then of course ang assistant warden it serve also as the chairman of the classification board and the disciplinary board in case na magkaroon ng gulo doon magkaroon ng riot sa loob. So si uh, Assistant Warden, ang uupo class, as the chairman, of course, the, of the disciplinary board. Aside from that, he is also the chairman of classification board. Then of course, we have the administrative groups. Ang administrative groups naman, they take charge of administrative functions of the jail bureau. Of course, pag sinabi natin administrative, the functions, kung uh, paano nag-perform, yung tinatawag natin na function or duty ng ating euro. Then of course, ang mga personal management branch natin, of course, assignment of the personnel, kung sino yung suited na pwedeng ilagay dyan sa position na yan. Then procedures of selection, preparation of personal reports, and individual record file. Okay, so of course, ang records and statistics natin, of course, they are, uh, uh, they are tasked to maintain yung mga booking sheets and arrest reports natin. Uh, dapat naka-in-detailed yan or nakasulat yan para ma, ano natin, uh, ma-scheme or ma-plot natin. So, of course, aside from that, so yung mga fingerprints and photographs, present prepare sa physical data of inmates, kung ilan ang nakalagay sa loob, ilan ang nakabilanggo as the moment. So, yan yung records and statistics branch natin. So property and supply branch naman, of course, yung mga equipment and supplies and mga materials for the purpose of operational ng jail natin, sila yung in charge dyan. Of course, yung medical and health services natin, yung mga, mga doctors natin, they provide physical examination of inmates upon confinement to check whether they are uh, uh, eligible to be combined or pwede silang i-combine doon sa iba class na nasa loob. Then of course, kapag may na hospital, of course, aside from that, they also conduct psychiatric and psychological examination kung may sakit ba sila sa utak or meron silang mental disease or illness or how their uh, mind works, kung paano ba sila nag-iisip, nasa tamang pag-iisip ba sila or wala. Okay, so of course, ang budget and finance uh, branch naman, of course, uh, when it comes to financial matters, such as budgeting, financing, accounting, and auditing. So, yan yung gawain ng budget and finance branch natin. Of course, yung mga sa mess service branch natin sa mga menu, yung kakainin ng mga inmates natin. So, sila yung uh, in charge yan, yung mess uh, service branch. Then, of course, we have the general service branch naman to repair uh, yung mga jail facilities and equipments. And, of course, yung, mga, yung cleanliness and beautification of the jail compound general service. Kapag may nasisira sa loob, may nasisira sa mga walang, yung mga ilaw and so on. So, sila yung may ano dyan? May hawa. Then, dito tayo class. So, we have the Mitimus Computing Branch. Ang uh, Mitimus Computing Branch class, they are tasked to receive the, the court decisions and compute the date of the full completion of the service of sentence of inmates. So, sila yung uh, natasan para i-compute yun then ibibigay sa offender or sa inmates class or yung mga convicted inmates kung kailan sila lalaya or when. Okay, so of course, meron pang consideration dyan. Magkakaroon pa ng uh, deduction when it comes sa good conduct time allowance when they portray or nagbigay sila ng signs na meron pa babago, meron progress sa kanila. Okay, 
So kapag si pag sinabi kasi nating uh, Mitimos class, it is the warrant, okay? Ganito lang ang tandaan niyo. Bibigyan ko kayo ng acronym na para pa- pangmalakasan. <laughs> para hindi niyo ma- ma- makalimutan pagdating ng board exam. Kuri Miwa. Okay. Kuri Miwa. Kasi yung ko, uh, ano yung yung Kuri Karisa, yung Kuri Karisa. Okay. Japanese na the sir no. Ang ko that stands for commitment order. commitment order while yung uh, re of course that is the written order of course the written uh, order pag sinabi natin uh, commitment order class that is the written order by the court while ang uh, tinatawag natin okay para nakikita natin while ang tinatawag natin ang mitimus tandaan niyo ang mitimus okay para hindi kayo mahirapan ka sa kaya meron tayong uh, sorry meron tayong miwa na acronym diyan miwa uh, mitimus Sorry, mitimus meaning yung wa that stands for waran. Okay, kaya waran yan. So tanda niyo pag sinabi natin, um, tanda niyo lang ha, yung keyword between the two, yung mitimus versus uh, commitment order. Ang commitment order, that is the written order, kaya meron tayong acronym na KURI. While ang uh, mitimus order naman, that is the waran order. Kasi ang haba ng definition nila, so dapat, Of course, uh, gamitan natin ng, ano, ng strategy or techniques. So again, pag sinabi natin, Mitimus, it is the warrant order issued by the court directing to the jail officer or prison authorities to receive the inmates para umpisahan niya na yung penalty imposed by the court for detention. Kaya tanawag na siya na PDL, Persons Deprived of Liberty. So again, ang Mitimus, it is a warrant order or it is a warrant order issued by the court for a service of sentence while ang commitment order naman it is the written order. Nakuha niyo? Nasundan niyo ba class? Yes sir. Okay, good. Sige. Okay, next tayo. Ay sorry. Ah, uh, i-clear po muna ako. Okay, next. Okay, so we have uh, the admission, registration, and confinement. So, ayan. So, dito tayo. So, explain natin. Uh, balik mo na pala ako doon. Hindi ko na ano. So, ang reception and diagnostic center class, ang tawag na natin ngayon, that is DRD, that is Directorate for Reception and Diagnostics. Of course, they are in charge with uh, quarantine. O, titignan, uh, titignan nila. yung inmates or yung uh, tao na yon kung um, meron ba siyang contagious disease or meron ba siyang dinadamdam na pwedeng makahawa sa ibang mga prisoners. So that's why yan yung trabaho na Directorate for Reception and Diagnostic Center. So nakalagay dyan, uh, i-close muna natin to. So it was, uh, okay, so yung DRD class, it found or matatagpuan natin yan sa Bilibid Prison as well. Kasi kapag ganun kung uh, anong kinds of uh, security ang uh, DRD, of course, maximum yan. So the Bilibid Prison and all fennel farms, of course, they are accepted by the RDC or the DRD ngayon, will be studied and classified for the purpose of which is the formulation of individualized treatment program designed to achieve the most successful rehabilitation for 60 days. Correct. Sentence prisoners lap with a death penalty are not eligible for admission and classification at the RDC automatic in Kwede. The Supreme Court brings them directly to the death row where they will await automatic review of their cases. Again, ang mga may uh, penalty, the death penalty class, they are not eligible na dadaan ngayon sa DRD. Okay, so automatic ilalagay sila ngayon ng uh, Supreme Court sa death row. yung mga bibitayin, yung mga papatayin. So, kasi nga, yung kaso nila is under the automatic review of the Supreme Court. So again, ang purpose ng Directorate for Reception and Diagnostic Center is to prepare yung mga inmates class or is a study, okay, bibigyan ng individualized treatment na suited para sa kanila. Then of course, maiwasan na rin yung mga contagious illness and diseases na pwedeng kumalat sa loob ng uh, facilities natin. Okay, so yung DRD class that is divided into two parts. Okay, we have the quarantine period kung saan is a study nga sinabi ko kanina, baka may mga AIDS or baka may mga sexually transmitted diseases or baka uh, and so on. So 
kailangan din talaga <clears throat> ng quarantine period. Katulad sa atin, di ba dati, ng quarantine tayo during pandemic para maiwasan ang pagkalat ng uh, tinatawag na na virus. So yan yung importance ng quarantine rin under the uh, DRD or Directorate for Reception and Diagnostic Center. Yes, uh, 55 days. But of course, yung, 5D, uh, yung total of 60 days. Pupunta rin tayo yun, class, pagdating sa uh, book, ay, book to, sa non-institutional correction. I-mare-recite or mare-repeat rin natin dyan. Basta hindi siya mag-end or hindi siya mag-sobra uh, sa 60 days. Then of course, you after ng quarantine period, yan papasok yung psychiatric, sociological, psychological, educational, vocational, and religious examination. Kung saan uh, itetest lahat ng aspects or areas kung saan uh, mapapabuti yung tinatawag natin na inmates or sentence individual. Okay. Okay, so ang quarantine period class na ninyo, i-explain natin to dito. Okay, so it shall be examined. Okay, tandaan niyo, the inmate will be put in quarantine in a designated cell at the RDC for a period of five days. Tandaan niyo, ah, for a period of five days during which he shall be administered the physical and mental examination to determine the fitness. Uh, this the those found to have infectious diseases and if sick are brought to the new believed prison hospital for medical treatment. So again, ang quarantine period class that is five days. Okay? Five days. Of course, hindi, ma, hindi uh, lalagpas sa 60 days. Okay. Dito. So after the quarantine period class, the inmate shall remain <coughs> sorry, in the reception and diagnostic center for a period of 55 days where shall undergo psychiatric, psychological, sociological, vocational, educational, religious, and other examination Kaya ang total class is 60 days. 55 days for uh, any other treatment or any other uh, uh, examination na i-undergo niya, that is 55 days. And of course, yung 5 days that is allotted for yung uh, tinatawag natin na quarantine period. So the result of the said examination shall be basis for the inmate's individualized treatment program, whatever the outcome, whatever the result. Bibigyan siya ngayon ng different program kasi every inmate dapat may masusunod or dapat merong specific uh, program na para lang sa kanya. Okay? So, yun yung purpose ng PRD. Okay. So, next tayo. Okay. So, dito tayo, class. So, sa admission, okay, ang admission na natin, class, an inmate shall be admitted at the reception ng diagnostic center or the DRD of a prison upon presentation of the following documents. Merong mitimus, and of course, uh, yung commitment order, yung information and court decision of the case, na guilty talaga siya beyond reasonable doubt of a particular crime. Certification of detention, if any, kung baka na-detain na, na ba siya, prior sa tinatawag natin na <clears throat> finality of his judgment. Kasi kapag na-detain na siya, class, of course, ima-minus yung tinatawag na na preventive imprisonment. Then, of course, yung uh, certification that the case of the inmate is not on appeal. Meaning, that the, the, the case or the decision of the court is final and executory. So, hindi na siya. Kailangan niya talaga pagdusahan or kailangan niya talaga pumasok na sa kulungan. Okay. Dito tayo. So, uh, under the registration naman class, oh, a prison shall keep a bound registration book wherein all commitments shall be recorded chronologically, okay, in order. The register shall contain uh, inmate, of course, the name of the inmate, yung reason for commitment and the authority, yung sentence niya, yung date and hour of submission, date and hour of discharge, and or transfer of the basis, therefore. So, yan, self-explanatory naman yan. Pag sinabi natin, eh, sorry, Tandaan niyo class, pag sinabi natin clamp down, okay, after registration, the inmate shall be taken a mug. Ibig sabihin, mug shot class. Picture of the face. Kasi di ba, mug is picture. Ay, mug is face. And shot is, uh, you take picture of my face. That's why we have mug shot. Of course, a front and side view, fingerprinted. And of course, assigned a permanent prison number. So, dapat meron kang uh, assigned prison uh, number. Kasi nga, 
naka database okay naka data, database class so pwedeng uh, ma-detect or pwede siyang malaman or pwedeng uh, matuntun kung saan siya pumunta in case then of course the inmate shall be given a prescribed haircut so the beards and mustache uh, shall be shaved off okay so yan yung sa clamp down okay ang shakedown naman class tandaan niyo ang shakedown Uh, it is the body search of every inmate so, or for the personal effects is required. Okay, so yan yung shakedown class. Okay, upon admission, the image shall be searched thoroughly kung baka may naka-insert dyan or baka may mga, mga deadly weapons na naka-insert dyan. So dapat kunin na lahat. Yan yung tinatawag natin na shakedown. Okay, shakedown yung tawag natin yung class. Then of course, ang confiscation of contraband items. Okay, any articles or any uh, things or sa uh, objects na, na uh, nakita or nakitaan yung ating uh, sentence uh, personnel or person under the rules of jail. Of course, yung mga contraband items and subject for confiscation, kukunin yan ngayon, class. Okay, so of course, mamaya explain natin what is contraband and of course, the noise and contraband. So, ang issuance of uniform, class, baka gusto nyo to. So, may uniform na kayo. So, baka gusto nyo to, class. Ha? So, sabihan nyo lang ako. Kasi marami tayong pakilala sa BUCOR at PGMP. Okay, so ang issuance of uniform. So yung newly admitted inmate sa class will be given an issue. Of course, uh, one blanket, one mat, one mosquito net, one set mess kit, and of course, one pair of sleeper. Aside from that, merong uh, regulation uniform and suits. Kung whether tangerine, blue, or uh, what they call uh, brown na uniform yung para sa kanya. And of course, dalawang t-shirts whenever practicable and of course, yung so, so on. So, mamili na kayong klasa. So, depende sa uniform. Ano ba yung maganda? Orange uh, or tangerine, blue or uh, brown. So, pumili na kayo as early as now. <laughs> okay. So, para meron na kayong choices pagdating ng araw. Uh, wag naman, no? Then, we have the diversification. So, ang diversification class, that is the principle of separating homogeneous type of prisoners that require special treatment and custody. Ulitin natin, that is the principle of separating homogeneous type of prisoners that require special treatment and custody. Halimbawa, yung sa old, nakaseparate sila. Kapag bata, iba na naman. And so on. Okay? So, yan yung diversification na tawag natin. Ang classification naman class, that is the process of determining the needs and requirement of the prisoners for assigning them to programs according to their existing resources. So, bibigyan or bibigyan sila ng separate program depende doon sa availability class ng resources na meron ang BJMP or yung jail natin. And of course, aside from that, ang classification, it is the process of assigning or grouping of offenders according to their sentence, to their gender, to their age, nationality, health, and criminal record. So, yan yung purpose ng classification. Okay. So, of course, we have the inmates' uh, prison, uh, prisoners' legal rights. Then, of course, that is under the uh, 1987 Constitution class. Okay. Uh, walang excessive panel, uh, penalties or fines shall be imposed or walang uh, cruel punishment or degrading in, uh, inhumane punishment class ang mai-inflict. Kasi nga diba, under sa, ano natin, sa, uh, sa Pilipinas, there's no bill of attainder and of course, yung ex post facto law shall be enacted in the Philippines. Okay, the Congress hereafter provides for it. Of course, um, any death penalty already imposed shall be reduced to the reclusion perpetua class. Kasi nga din, ang uh, death penalty in the Philippines now is temporarily suspended. So, automatic uh, yung mga crimes na punishable by death, it will be reduced automatically sa reclusion perpetua kapag uh, revised penal code yung na-violate mo. Then, kapag special law naman, that is what they call life imprisonment naman. Then, of course, the employment of physical, psychological, or degrading punishment against any prisoner or detainee or the use of substandard or inadequate penal facilities under subhuman conditions shall be dealt with by law. Pero hindi na susunod yan, class. Kasi kung titingnan ninyo, uh, inhumane talaga or parang uh, hindi maganda yung kalagayan nila. Then prohibition of cruel treatment, prohibition of capital punishment, and so on. Okay, so that is under the Article 3 or your Bill of Rights of the 1987 Constitution. 
Dito naman sa International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights naman or the ICCPR, so walang tinatawag na torture, okay? yung tinatawag nila na torture convention, uh, pinoprohibit or niiwasan yung paggamit ng torture or pag cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment without exemption or derogation. Parang same as true with our constitution. So in addition, yung uh, ICCPR class, kasi international guidelines yan, uh, yung mandates that all persons deprived of liberty shall be treated with humanity and with respect for the inherent dignity of human person. So it also requires that the reform and social readaptation of prisoners be as a national aim for imprisonment. Ang purpose niya or ang point niya class ng ICCPR sa so dapat every prisoners should be treat, uh, treated with uh, respect and of course yung humanity and compassion. So yan lang yung uh, gustong iparating ng International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Okay, of course there is international standards. Pagdating sa Pilipinas, meron naman tayong 1987 Constitution. Then, uh, okay, so bakit hindi ko na makita? Okay, so uh, meron tayong tanatawag na standard minimum rules yung Mandela rules natin. Okay? So it was uh, adopted by the UN Economics and Social Council in 1957. Uh, so yung standard minimum rules class uh, are not a treaty. They, they constitute an authoritative guide to binding treaty standards. So yun yung United Nations standard for minimum rules for treatment of prisoners. Yan naman yung sinabi ng tinatawag na na United Nations. Okay? So that is also known as the standard minimum rules. Okay, meron tayong tinatawag na Beijing rules. Ang Beijing rules class, it is the body of principles for the protection of all persons under any form or detention of prisoners, whether you are male, female, mayaman, or mahira. So you are equal under sa constitution. Okay. So yan. So yan yung tanatawag natin na Beijing rules. Of course, ang Beijing rules nangyari yan sa China, sa Beijing, China. Okay. So of course, that is in accordance or in regards with the United Nations standards for minimum rules for the administration of juvenile justice naman. Okay. So mga rights and privileges of inmates class of course, an inmate shall have the following basic rights to receive compensation for labor they perform. Kaya di ba, kumikita pa rin, pwede na lang i-support yung family nila outside of the prison. To be credited with time allowance for good conduct and loyalty kapag nag-display naman sila ng kabaitan and uh, pwede naman sila pagkatiwalaan, so they will be credited for that. Third, to send and receive mail matters. Of course, that, di ba, mayroong mga mails na nakalagay dyan, mga sulat na nanggaling sa pamilya nila. To practice their religion or observe their faith, to receive an authorized visitor, to ventilate their grievances through the proper channels, to receive that uh, benefits and pecuniary aids for injuries. Uh, ano lang naman yan, self-explanatory. So ayan, of course, they, they are uh, privileged to attend, participate in entertainment, athletic activity, basketball, volleyball class within the prison reservation. Read books and other reading materials at the library, smoke cigar and cigarettes except in prohibited places, but of course, uh, iniiwasan na yan. Participate in civic, religious, and other activities authorized by prison authorities. Receive gifts and prepared food from visitors subject to inspection. But then again, it's up to the discretion of the court, a uh, discretion of the jail facilities. Um, rights of the detainee, of course, aside by, again, meron silang to wear civilian clothes, to grow his hair in a customary style. So, yan. Okay, so the application of you to uh, view the remain of the deceased uh, relative. So, kapag may namatayan yung pamilya ng isang prisoner, so a minimum or medium security inmates may upon written application shall be allowed to, okay, kapag namatay yung wife or husband, Young child, okay, young brother and sister, father and mother, and grandchildren. But then again, it's not for all. Kung sino lang yung payagan or sino lang yung pinayagan nila, so yun lang yung pwedeng uh, makapag-view or pwedeng makales para dalawin yung uh, dead body or yung patay na relatives niya. Okay, so dito lang muna tayo class mag-end. Okay, so kasi baka hindi makaya ng recording natin. But still, um, ibibigay ko yung uh, file mamaya after this uh, ano natin 
sa ating uh, sa Telegram and of course yung file ng for ad natin. So makikita tayo sa Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay? So ayan na class. So para uh, matapos na natin ang after ng uh, actually two days uh, matapos na natin ang for ad, then proceed na tayo sa criminal law and jurisprudence para uh, apat na lang yung area. So lahat ng subject itatackle natin in detail. Okay? So ayan. Yes, printable yung file natin. You can print it anytime. Okay, so pwede i-print yung uh, file natin class ha. So pwede yung i-print mamaya. Then of course, pati yung uh, presentation na to ibibigay ko sa inyo after this live. Okay, so para maka ano na kayo, maka-scan scan na kayo or maka-advance uh, na kayo. Okay, so ayan. So i-stop uh, ano ko na muna.